When I was a kid, I had this very distinct memory of being on vacation and my uncle was there and uh, I had a toy, I was showing him my toy and then he was playing with it and I asked for it back and then he looked at me and he said no. I said, why? It's mine. Give it back. He said, nope, it's mine. And so I looked at him. I was like, no, it's definitely mine. And he looked at me and he said, possession is 90% of ownership. And obviously he was joking and he gave it right back. But that line has stuck with me since then. And it is extremely applicable in the case of gold ownership. You see, this week we just got news that the case between Venezuela and the Bank of England has been decided that the Bank of England is not going to release Venezuelan gold back to Venezuela. And so as soon as I saw this, it made me remember about that time when I was a little kid and my uncle told me that possession is 90% of ownership. If you don't have it, you don't really have it. Now, not only does the Bank of England refusing to uh, deliver the gold to Venezuela that is owned by Venezuela, not only does that set extremely dangerous precedents moving forward for other countries that want to reclaim their gold, but it also spells extreme risk for any holders of GLD, the ETF. Are you curious why? Let's dive in. Now we have to start this off with a little bit of a backstory because it's not just straight cut and dry that Venezuela requested their gold and the Bank of England refused to give it back. The dispute actually started because of not recognizing Maduro as the actual president of Venezuela. Over 50 countries around the world now officially do not recognize Maduro officially as the president of Venezuela, which according to their constitution and their laws, it places the leader of their, I think it's called their national assembly, the leader in becomes the interim president. And so officially they're recognizing this guy. I can't remember his name. I'll put it up on the screen. I think it's like Guido or Guado or something. Now, so officially they're recognizing him and not Maduro. And Maduro is the one who is requesting to get all of the gold back from Bank of England right now, just about $1 billion worth of gold. Now, officially, they don't want to give this gold to Maduro because they think that they don't, well, first of all, they disagree with the way that he's running the country. And I don't think there's really anybody who's looking at Maduro and saying, you know, he's doing a great job right now. Everybody on the left says, no, he's bad because he's a dictator. Everybody on the right says, no, he's bad because it's, uh, you know, he's running it like a socialist country. There's wide agreement on the fact that Maduro is bad. Disagreement on the reasons why. In either case, they don't want to supply him with a billion dollars more in gold that he can go and do whatever he wants with because they don't like the way that he's running the country. And not only that, but the opposition leader, Juan Guaido or Guido or Guido, however you say it, he specifically asked Britain not to release the gold because he does not want Maduro to have the additional power and purchasing ability that this gold would give him. And so now the Bank of England was kind of caught between, you know, officially they're caught between a rock and a hard place because they're saying, hey, this guy who we are saying we're officially recognizing as the president, Guado or Guido, is saying don't release it. But the guy who is actually running the country and who really is the president just because he actually still holds control, he's asking for the gold back. Now, in the case, Maduro's defense was that, hey, you guys, Britain, you've been treating me as if I actually am the president. Your official statement might not be recognizing me, but in every dealing that we have with ambassadors and diplomatic issues and discussing political issues back and forth, you're actually acting as if I am the president and I am in control, which is true. They are actually treating him as if he's the leader and as if he's actually in control. Nevertheless, the court ruled to not side with Maduro, which means that they are not giving him the billion dollars in gold. Now, I'm not making this video to discuss the political issues in Britain or Venezuela, the systems that Maduro has put in place, whether, you know, what the reasons why that country is going downhill. That's not the purpose of this video. That's for another video. What this video is about is the extremely dangerous precedence that it sets for the Bank of England to refuse redeeming gold that belongs to another country. And it seems as if this was really just a cover for the reason why they don't wanna give up the gold, that it really wasn't about Maduro and his politics, that it mostly was about the fact that the Bank of England has nowhere near the amount of gold that they say they do. And so they're trying to do absolutely everything possible to keep gold in their warehouses because their gold is, is all lent out on an unallocated basis and there are multiple claims on every ounce of gold 
that is held in those vaults. And so if they lose any of this physical gold by shipping it out and sending it out, it can cause big problems really fast. I made a video about this a while ago, but last year Poland repatriated their gold from Bank of England due to geopolitical risks like this. But the odd thing was, instead of just repatriating the gold that they already had there, they first purchased an additional 100 tons of gold from the Bank of England and repatriated that gold. And so due to the lack of ability to transparently see into the actual financials and the actual amounts of gold and who has all the claims, on all the ounces due to all the trading and the way that they've set these systems up. It's impossible to say, but there's little pieces of evidence, little breadcrumbs that keep on popping up here and there that are pointing more and more towards the fact that they're really, really struggling right now with trying to keep a lid on gold prices and keep a lid on delivery and redemption requests because there's nowhere near enough gold to deliver if everybody starts to request it. And make no mistake, people are starting to request physical delivery now. July so far, we've seen absolutely astounding record numbers of physical delivery requests. And over the last couple of months, it's it's been building up to this. It hasn't just started this month. Uh, the delivery requests around the world have just been skyrocketing and it, that pace is increasing even still this month for both gold and silver. And so all around the world, big money is starting to realize, hey, there's a physical shortage and we want to get our hands on the physical and not leave it in the hands of somebody else. We want to be able to get our hands on the physical and store it ourselves before there's none left. So it's almost like a run on the bank is happening with physical gold and silver around the world. But the odd thing is some of the biggest players like gold ETFs like GLD have mysteriously been able to source massive quantities of gold throughout this entire crisis. And so people have dug into the financials and dug into the prospectus of GLD and found that GLD, their custodian is HSBC. HSBC is the sixth largest bank in the world. In March, they had a $200 million loss in one day from their gold trading desk. And usually that's how much they make in an entire year. And so HSBC's dealing in the gold markets are not fine and dandy. But HSBC is the custodian for GLD in terms of holding the gold. And HSBC has their own vaults. But it also states in the prospectus that HSBC will sometimes use sub-custodians to locate and source gold. Well, who is the sub-custodian of HSBC? Ah, uh, yes, it is the Bank of England. The reason why this is a big deal is because the Bank of England isn't selling this gold. The Bank of England is leasing this gold, which means that as every time they do this, there's at least two claims on the exact same ounce of gold. And it doesn't physically change locations either. It stays in the vaults at the Bank of England. Think about it this way. You own a car and you keep your car in your garage. But but let's say your buddy is applying for a job and he needs to show that he has a way to get to work and he plans to take the bus but let's just say for the job application they don't accept him being able to take public transportation they want to see that he has his own method of transportation in order to get the job so he comes to you and says hey i need to borrow the rights to your car so that i can get this job and so you say sure and so you sign sign a little contract and it says, okay, he owns, he, he can borrow the, uh, borrow the car from you and that he can take that and show his employer or his prospective employer. Yep. I have a car and I, uh, I, I can use this to get to work. Now he doesn't ever plan to actually use your car. He's just borrowing the rights to it for now so that he can show. And then he's going to just give that back to you. And then, you know, you guys will settle out the transaction for it and uh, he'll continue to take public transportation. But then let's say your buddy has an idea and he says, Hey, I want to make a little bit of money off of this. And so he takes, that contract and he sells it to somebody else. Now the other person has a claim on your car in your garage instead of instead of your buddy. Now this other person, let's say that they actually want to utilize those rights. And so they take the legal contract and they say, hey, I want to actually use your car because I have the contract that says I can use your car. In a normal situation, you might be able to say, sure, you can borrow my car and then we'll close out the contract later and get rid of the contract. But in a pinch, you might need to be using your car at the exact same time. So who do you think is the more likely person to end up driving the car? You as the owner with the car in your garage? or the random person you don't know that's saying, hey, I've got a right to use your car. Well, as my uncle told me so many years ago, 
possession is 90% of ownership. And Venezuela is learning that now, as is every country and institution around the world that is watching the Bank of England not deliver on their promise to deliver gold right now. And as Poland was expecting earlier, which is why they started to repatriate their gold. And as every owner of gold around the world should recognize, if you don't have it, you don't have it. Now, compounding this is the problem that bullion banks and gold trading desks around the world are caught net short right now. And so they're continually trying to keep the price of gold down so they can buy back all of their contracts and close out their losing positions. It's They, they have a very similar position to if if you had shorted a stock and the stock started to go up, well, if you're if you've got a big enough position on that, once you buy that stock to close out your position to cut off your losses, that buying back will continue to drive the price even higher. And so, there's there's massive net shorts across the uh, the gold trading industry right now that they're trying to close out in order to stop the bleeding. But every time they all try and close out, all that's doing is adding in buying pressure. And so. You're, you're having a lot of bullion banks and trading desks trying to keep the price of gold suppressed so that they can uh, continually try and get out of this losing position that they've uh, backed themselves into a corner on. Well, what happens when demand increases, but the price doesn't increase? Supply gets demolished because if everybody wants something, but prices don't move up in order to compensate for that, the supply, everybody's going to be able to buy it right? That's part of the reason why we're seeing these physical deliveries absolutely demolish supplies all around the world because prices aren't able to rise quickly enough to compensate for that. When when the price is in a free market and it can uh, just be uh, just react to supply and demand, as soon as these uh, this uh, demand spikes, you're going to see the price spike in order to compensate for that and it will fix the lack of supply issues. But we have s some big players over here that are trying to keep the price down so that they can get out of their losing positions. Well, at the same time, you have massive supply issues uh, going on in uh, the, the lending space, specifically with the Bank of England. And so there's a really, really big risk factor in owning your gold through trusts and through funds such as GLD because the, the amount, the, the layers of counterparty risk in there mean that you can't actually tell whether they physically have their hands on all the gold that they say they have their hands on. And due to the fact that you're trusting on entities like HSBC and the Bank of England who have, you know, histories with and spotty records of, you know, massive losses and not redeeming claims on gold that are actually legally there like Venezuela, at the very least it speaks volumes about the amount of risk through investing in something like that for anything other than a short-term trade. But it also shows that there are there are probably going to be more and more big losses piling up and showing up all over the gold trading markets very soon here because you can't keep this stuff up forever. And at this point, with the position that the institutions are in, it really looks like the only way this is resolved is if there's going to be some winners and some big losers. They're not going to be able to get out of their positions and get out of these messes especially with the prices where they are today. So if you're thinking of investing in gold right now, I am extremely cautious about something like GLD, even something like unallocated storage services, because you just don't know when push comes to shove, whether they'll redeem those gold claims or not and actually deliver because it might not just be you that has a claim on that gold. It might be you plus one, two, three, four others. And seeing as how these dynamics are still at play all across the precious metals market, long term, I'm still extremely bullish on the price of gold as it seems like we just have a, a lot of tailwinds behind the sales right now. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic 4th of July weekend. Have a great day.